Director of Alabama Securities Commission Joseph Borg has revealed that his state and several other states will be launching an investigation into Genesis Global Capital, the world's leading crypto lending firm. Borg claimed that the investigation would encompass several other crypto firms, but their point of inquiry will revolve around Genesis's ties with investors and the violation of security laws. Stick around to find out more. Starting with, an investigation has been launched into Genesis Global Capital. According to a November 25th report by Barron's, state security regulators will look into the interconnectedness of Genesis Global Capital and leading investors. The report stated that several complaints against the world's leading crypto lending firm came to light after it was indicated that Genesis had been using its ties to manipulate state residents into investing in cryptocurrency without state regulation. Joseph Borg claimed that Alabama Securities Commission would be looking into the matter that put both Genesis and other lending firms in the spotlight. Borg, however, didn't name the other firms in their investigation. Genesis had previously made headlines when the company announced it'd be hiring investment banks to explore several options, including bankruptcy. Reportedly, the lending company had been scrambling all throughout November, trying to raise fresh capital or reach a deal with creditors. Inside sources claimed that Genesis had been struggling to recover ever since the crypto exchange FTX had collapsed and when Three Arrows Capital, a crypto hedge fund, also failed. The company's primary lending unit had to suspend redemptions and loan originations after Genesis revealed that its derivatives unit had close to $200 million in locked funds in the company's FTX trading account. Digital Currency Group, the company's parent institution, had to step in and strengthen Genesis's balance sheet with $140 million in equity infusion. It might be interesting to note that DCG is also the parent company of Coindesk, an online news site specializing in cryptocurrency and blockchains, one of the first few sites to break the news on the ongoing investigation into Genesis Global Capital. Coming up next, Genesis claims unprecedented market turmoil. On November 16th, Genesis announced the first of much bad news. The company would be suspending customer redemptions and new loan organizations after the fallout from the FTX implosion had spread through crypto credit markets. The company sent a press release informing customers of the sudden change in events and oversimplified the matter by stating that it was because of unprecedented market turmoil. However, analysts quickly realized that Genesis was attempting to artificially make up for the supposed turmoil and would sooner or later have to declare bankruptcy. Sure enough, just a week later, the company announced they had hired investment bankers to explore their options, one of which unsurprisingly included bank Bankruptcy. Interim CEO Durar Islam assured customers that the temporary halt was due to the FTX implosion and that it would be resolved within the next week. Islam assured everyone by stating that Genesis Trading operated separately from Genesis Global Capital. Gemini, the company whose clients would be most impacted by the lending freeze, quickly responded to the announcement by stating that they had been working closely with Genesis to help customers redeem their funds. They also clarified that all customers trading with Genesis Trading could still withdraw their funds at any time. Moving on, DCG attempts to throw Genesis a lifeline. At the end of 2022, Genesis Global is expected to have close to $2.3 billion in active loans. This was never a secret per se, but had never been made public either. Interestingly enough, DCG also owns Grayscale, the largest holder in the world with 11 billion Bitcoin. After Islam's revelation that, in so many words, hinted at Genesis moving on to potential bankruptcy, DCG CEO Barry Silbert announced that the parent company would be doing its best to make sure that the world had access to what they called the best financial system there is. And for a while, DCG did offer a lifeline after it was revealed that Genesis had over $175 million in frozen FTX accounts. DCG's $140 million equity infusion allowed them to stay afloat. Silbert was quick to defend Genesis against allegations by claiming that Islam's November 16th revelation had nothing to do with the solvency of the company. Rather, he claimed that the issue was a liquidity and duration mismatch in Genesis's loan book. While some believe that Silbert extensively underplayed the reality of the situation. Others believed that DCG's lifeline might allow Genesis to operate for just long enough for customers to redeem their currencies and withdraw them while they could. Moreover, Moellis & Co. are stepping in. Just days later, Genesis announced that the company had hired the services of investment bankers at Moellis & Co. to help them explore their options. According to a press release by the lending company, Moellis & Co. would help them sort out the mismatch, as stated by Silbert earlier, in their liquidity and duration and allow customers to resume operations per usual. Analysts, however, believed that the company was exploring another option that they didn't necessarily let on, bankruptcy. Islam claimed that Moellis & Co. would essentially be fast-tracking conversations between their company and some of the industry's leading creditors and borrowers. The two names that popped up the most in Islam's announcement were DCG and Gemini. One Twitter user, at CryptoCred, provided a satirical yet accurate timeline of the statements Genesis made until November 21st. Their first announcement came shortly after the FTX implosion, assuring customers that the implosion had not affected the lending 
crowdfunding website. The next came just about a day later, wherein the company claimed they'd lost $7 million. Then, close to a week later, the company followed up with some more bad news, claiming that $175 million were frozen in FTX accounts. This was followed by the announcement that Genesis would suspend operations, yet customers were told not to worry. And for a while, after DCG lent the company $140 million, customers were actually appeased, thinking that if not much else, at least the company would stay afloat long enough for them to withdraw from their accounts. This was short-lived. This brings us to today. Genesis has recently announced that the company needs close to $1 billion in order to operate. They've made it clear, in no uncertain terms, that should the company not be able to make up that $1 billion, they'd be forced to file for bankruptcy. Furthermore, state investigators launch inquiry into Genesis. Borg cited the interdependencies and interlocking connections in the crypto space as a point of concern due to the contagion risk when a player like FTX goes under. Neither the Alabama Securities Commission nor Genesis responded for further comment on the matter. Borg did, however, claim that their principal focus in the investigation would be to oversee if Genesis had established ties with other sectors in a bid to coerce residents to lend more to the company. According to Borg, the matter had become one of security violation, something that state authority had anticipated after several crypto companies went under after the FTX implosion. Previously, Genesis had released a statement to several of its prime investors, informing them that they were at risk of going under if the company didn't receive a $1 billion equity loan. A spokesperson for the trading company revealed to Decrypt that the company had no imminent plans to file for bankruptcy. Instead, they wanted to solve the situation consensually. As per Borg's statements and Barron's reports, Genesis might have taken dire methods to keep their company afloat. This does beg the question of why DCG didn't extend the lifeline that Genesis needed, considering how the companies were intertwined in a more legal capacity anyway. Silbert claimed that DCG and Genesis operate separately, and that's all we know of the matter. Lastly, what could this mean for the future of digital currencies? To put it simply, the core principle of digital currency was to decentralize existing currency, that is, to overstep government authority over digital financing in a bid to make online currencies more accessible and not impose the same regulations as traditional monies. However, there's a growing concern in the digital world that the U.S. has taken on a rather proactive role in cryptocurrency. Notwithstanding, the fact that several governments have taken an interest in digital financing, analysts believe that there's a looming threat of the U.S. government completely taking over cryptocurrency operations in the United States. And while the Alabama Securities Commission and other securities commissions claim that their investigation into Genesis is purely to oversee alleged security violations, some believe it's one of the many feeble attempts by the government to take over the world's largest crypto trading companies. FTX crashing and Genesis potentially shutting down pose a greater risk than what many anticipate. Even if we take away the looming threat of government takeover, it shows that the once booming industry is struggling and might potentially lose the momentum it had only just recently built. That's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments down below which crypto company you think would be the next to go down after the FTX crash. Do you think state investigations into decentralized currency systems take away from the very concept of it? Will Genesis recover? Comment down below and make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you in the next one.